Chaz Fant, and <clears throat> I am going to talk to you about surface water availability in Morocco. And uh, the, the main point, um, so I'm going to talk to you about surface water, but I really want to, to more discuss on this uh, subtopic, which is the balancing uncertainty. That's um, more the, the focus. And I, this is some work that I did with Alyssa McCluskey, who's here, and uh, Ken Stresbeck, who's coming a little bit later. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm a civil engineer. I think I should be clear about that. Um, so I'm not going to go through the water cycle. I know all you guys know how the water cycle works for the most part, but I just want to point out that um, I'm talking specifically about surface water. So I, I'm not talking about storage. I'm not talking about aquifers, but uh, surface water. So there's snowmelt um, and, and other things, which I'll, I'll get into. So <clears throat> I'm part of a team. And in this team, we, um, we have this integrated framework. And you'll actually see this later. I, I stole this from my advisor's presentation. He's presenting later, so I won't go through it in detail. But um, actually, he doesn't know that I stole it, so don't tell him. <laughs> um, but I, I, what I'm presenting is the, the rivers, the runoff stream flow section of this. And I'm presenting this because this is a, a fairly straightforward, simple model. And um, then we can get, it, get into the, some of the uh, uncertainties and how do we present this, these sorts of things. Quick overview of its Clyron 2 is the surface uh, rainfall runoff model. Uh, so what we like about this model is that the focus is on climate uh, impacts. So it, nudging the climate, we end up getting this uh, change in runoff. So there's a, a calibration validation process to build the base model. And for the future, like I said, we just basically nudge the climate and see what happens to the runoff. It's fairly simple. This is uh, just a, a quick schematic. Again, input climate, output runoff. The uh, structure, if you care about these sorts of things, uh, it's two layers. There's quick runoff and, and slow runoff. Um, and all right, so now, now to Morocco. So this is our basin map. Um, and so we did this for, this was funded by a group who will remain nameless. And they, they told us we have people who can go out and get the data. So they went out and got the data. And they came back and they gave us 16 basins with, um, with measured stream flow. And <clears throat> the other 21, we have no idea. But we're, you know, we, have to, we have to model this entire country. So there are, are theories in hydrology to deal with these sorts of things, um, which we, we use the best that we could, the simplest. Um, but still, this, this does introduce um, quite a bit of uncertainty. I mean, we have no, no idea what the, the measured stream flow in a lot of these basins might be. Um, so uh, th then there's the, this other idea um, of natural versus actual or measured stream flow. So actual is it rains, it hits the ground, um, runoff goes into the rivers. So that's, that would be natural. But actual stream flow is people, you know, people come to the river, they take from the river, they irrigate, they do all sorts of things with it, or they, they build dams and they control the stream flow. And so what you end up getting is, um, is measured, which is most of the time tampered with by, by people, which is good, and I'm not, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but um, the model that we're using is specifically designed for natural stream flow, so it has the, the climate signal. So this is another thing that introduces uncertainty in the, in the historical data. Um, so then we get to the GCMs, <clears throat> which I'm, I'm not going to go into a full account of the uncertainty of the GCMs. I assume you guys, for the most part, understand that they can't predict, for example, what weather will be like on January 21st of 2053. Um, but they are a, a good, they're great models and they, they're designed for a specific purpose. Um, so <clears throat> in this study, we were given downscaled from the Hadley model, downscaled results at 0.1 degrees. And so, and this again, was, this was the, the, the funders were giving us this data. And 
I assume that they did a pretty extensive study to find out which model is the best model. Then they did spend a lot more money on trying to downscale using the best method, et cetera, et cetera. And we said, okay, from another project, we have this other suite. We have this, these 56 scenarios that we can, we can use. Um, and it's easy. Once we build the model, it's, it's fairly simple to just add, add more scenarios. We can run them through. Um, so just a quick, um, for those of you who aren't so familiar with uh, the GCM models, um, GCMs are really best at predicting uh, long-term global changes um, and specifically in temperature. So once you move to precipitation, which of course is really important for, for runoff, there's quite a bit more uncertainty. Um, and so we want, we sort of want to stay as close to that. Obviously, we, we're doing a, a project that's local and where time matters. So we can't, um, we can't use that specifically. Uh, but we want to stay as close as we can to, to that. Um, and, and this is this idea of balancing. How do we balance that and, and using, you know, these super downscaled, um, you know, up to daily results. So what we do is we take GCM historical and because each, each GCM runs a historical run, we take G, the future GCM uh, results and we take those and we, we figure out what's the change because GCMs don't do a great job of predicting what has already happened, what we know has happened. Um, so we end up with, with this change in climate and we take that change in climate and uh, in this case, we had a 30-year measured um, climate. And we put those together. So we, we nudge the, the measured climate, or shock it, if you're a, an economist. Um, and then we end up with, with this climate that we put into the model. Um, and I should say, for the, for the future, we, we ended up with uh, average decadal changes for each month, so 12 values for, for each month. And I'm sorry, 12, 12 values total. And we took the 30 years, applied that change, and then took the mean of that. So we, um, my point being that we're, we're taking a lot of, we're doing a lot of averaging. And even with doing all, these, all this averaging, we end up with, um, so this is temperature on the left, precipitation on the right. <clears throat> uh, for 2030, 2050, and 2080, I know this is kind of hard to read. Um, and the, the distribution in the box and whisker plots is the 56 scenarios that we ran. So you can see that there's, there's an enormous distribution even by 2030. And remember, this is a 30-year average, um, each of those 10 years representing 30 more years. So really, this is a 90-year a average from the model. This is a lot of averaging. And still, we get um, changes in temperature, which GCMs are, are fairly good at predicting changes in temperature between zero and almost up to two by 2030, which is, you know, in, in 20 years, <laughs> less than 20 years. Um, and then by 2050, you know, you, you, you still get these, these huge variations. Um, and precipitation as well, and, and this is in percentage, so this, um, it's a percentage of, so you get, you know, somewhere between negative 20 and uh, positive 60 in the A2 scenario. So then we ran it through the model, and we end up with, with results. So, you know, same sort of distributions is not so surprising. Um, in general, precipitation is going down. Most of the medians are below the, the zero mark, and temperature is going up. So obviously runoff is going to generally go down. Uh, and so, yeah, so we, we end up getting these, these pretty large distributions. And then the X marks here, so the... The X on this side is the A2, the Hadley A2, and then on this side is, is actually B2, but I didn't really have a, a good place to put it. Um, just to show you, you know, um, where, these, where these end up falling. And so, you know, obviously we chose a method taking a lot of, doing a lot of averaging. And, and maybe downscaling can give you a better sense of what's happening. Um, you know, this is for, I forgot to mention, this is for a specific basin. Um, but you end up with, at the end of the day, you kind of end up with this, this one point, this one mark. And you don't really know if this one mark is at the top or at the bottom of the full distribution. 
And so this is change over all of Morocco. This is, you know, again, taking more, more averaging, taking more means uh, over all of the basins. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the distribution kind of shortens a little bit. Some are, are dry, some are wetter. Uh, and then the Hadley actually ends up kind of somewhere in the middle, pretty much in, in within that 50%, uh, middle 50%. So, finally, uh, I have a little bit more time than I thought. The, so, obviously, the future is uncertain. We all know that. Uh, and I don't think a colleague of mine said, the future is uncertain, GCMs are terrible, um, therefore, what we should do, and engineers um, often have a safety factor. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. So, he was saying what we should do is we should just change the safety factor, just bump it up a little bit. So, instead of 1.5, we'll use 2. <coughs> End of the day, we don't need to really do these huge impact studies. Um, the problem with that, of course, is it's more expensive, and we really need to to um, to narrow that that uh, you know where that is exactly. So instead of maybe 1.5, we might decide we'll use uh, 1.8 based on on long analysis because it's, it's more expensive to build at a, a two. Um, so I'm not saying that the the GCMs are are bad. They're they're great. They're the best that science has to offer. I think climate scientists have a really difficult, <clears throat> really difficult job um, trying to predict these things. Uh, but what I, I do want to say is I think it's, it's really important that we start to, um, and th this has been said before, but that we start to understand these things um, with an uncertain future and start planning with an uncertain future just like we've done in the past. Um, and I, I think that understanding where that distribution falls is, is really valuable information for, for policymakers. And that is the end.